If you want your business to grow, you have to pay careful attention to the data surrounding your business. What's working for you? What isn't? When we talk about our Poshmark business, we have to ask ourselves, what brands move well for me? What was my cost of goods on that item? What is the bottom line? All of that information is kind of difficult to find when it comes to the Poshmark app itself. They do have some information regarding our sales and inventory in their My Seller Tools portion of the app, but it's kind of cumbersome to look through and to really glean any real information from. And that's why I'm so excited to talk to you today about this tool that will help you look at your data in a much more meaningful way. Stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Kitizen, and ThreadUp. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the one tool that you need to grow your Poshmark business. That tool is called Seller Insight. And unfortunately, at this time, it is only available for Apple users, but it's an app that takes data from Poshmark that Poshmark gives its sellers. And what it does is it takes the information from our inventory report, as well as our sales reports that you can find in the My Seller Tools part of the Poshmark app, and it turns that data into meaningful and easy to interpret graphs to help you make sense of what's actually happening in your Poshmark business. I'm so excited to be talking to you about this app today because I've been using it now for probably the past six months, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that it truly has changed how I look at my Poshmark business and how much it's helped me make more informed decisions moving forward as far as how to price things or what to pick up or what brands to continue picking up or what brands to let go of. And so if you want to learn more about the app in this video, I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the app itself so you can see what it looks like. And I'm also going to be talking to you about pricing when it comes to the app. I'll provide a tutorial on how to get the data from Poshmark into the app and basically anything else you need to know about the app itself. I did have the pleasure of sitting down with the two creators of the app, so I feel like I know a good amount about it and they shared with me what they would like for me to share with you when it comes to this app. Down in the description below, I will provide timestamps regarding each topic that I'm going to cover, but essentially I will start by giving you a tour of the app itself so you can see all of the different features that it has because not only does it provide data and analytics that, you know, again, like I said earlier, it's kind of hard to make sense of in the spreadsheet format that Poshmark gives it to us in, but it also has a lot of functionalities. You can actually share from this app, you can relist from this app, and you can even kind of dive into a few other platforms with this app. And like I said, I'll get into all of that here in a little bit. I'll also share with you my favorite ways to utilize this app because like I said, I have been using it now since they released it sometime like late 2019, I believe. I've been you know using this app for quite some time. And then finally, I'll talk to you about pricing and answer any last questions that you may have about the app. So if you want to check out the timestamps below, then you can go exactly to where you want to go in the video to see exactly what you want to see. But if you're excited to get started, hit that like button and let's get into it. Full disclosure, I just recorded for like an hour straight a tutorial on how to use this app because there's so much you can do with it, but I decided that was way too long. So I'm going to show you kind of like the bare bones of this app and all of the wonderful things you can do with it. If there is anything that you would like to see more of or have me go more in depth on, definitely comment in the comment section down below and let me know that you want to learn more about blank. But I'm going to try to zip through this as quickly as possible and just give you a quick overview because oh my goodness, like I could really spend a lot of time showing you this app. So here we go. We're going to open it up together. The first thing it's going to do is make sure that you have the latest version of the app just so you're able to get all of the goodness that it is. At the very top, you'll have a lot of information that looks just like what you can see on Poshmark. And then when you start scrolling, this is the dashboard, by the way. This is like your homepage. This is where you start to see a lot of goodness like automatically. So the first thing you're gonna see at the very top are your live sales you can see a really quick snapshot. You see what items you sold in that day and how much you've earned as well as what you've sold for the week. What you'll notice is that I'm having a horrendous week. Like it's 
awful. But the way that I was able to see my live sales is at the very top, there's a bar with the word sync. And if you press that, it's going to show you what items you've sold so far that day. Otherwise, it won't just pop up. You do have to press that button and then it'll show you what items you've sold that day. And I don't think I've sold anything else since these three pieces. So I don't think that there will be anything else. And if you do make a sale, it'll have like a really cool cha-ching sound, which is fun. But that's how you can keep track of your sales for the day and just see it in a really nice snapshot picture. Oh, it did have a little snap or a little cha-ching sound. I don't know why. But yeah, you can see like which days you sold a bunch of stuff. You can see how many sales you've had, all that good stuff. The next thing that you'll see is live inventory. So this is how many things you've listed in the week. I've listed 35 items and that's a value of $900. So you can kind of see the correlation between like how much you've listed and how much you've sold. You can see a snapshot of your most profitable brands. And if you look at the top, you can change the time frame. So if I want to just look at the last 30 days, um, you can see that in the last 30 days, Banana Republic has been my highest performing brand or like my highest profitable brand. But in the year 2020, overall, Banana Republic is on the list. It's number three, but it's definitely not the highest. There's a category called none. And that's all stuff that either is wholesale, um, like boutique item stuff, or it's stuff that just doesn't have a brand that Poshmark recognizes. So that has been my quote unquote highest performing brand, but American Eagle is the next one. And then in 2019, it was actually J. Crew, and Banana Republic was the seventh highest brand, which is still really good, but you can kind of see like in general, Banana Republic, it does really good for me. And then if you want to just kind of look at your entire selling history, you can see that since 2017, I started selling in December of 2017, but you can see that J. Crew has been the best brand for me, the most profitable brand, but it's been shifting. And like in the year 2020, J. Crew is not even on my list. So while that has done well for me in the past, it's not something that I need to be picking up as much anymore, obviously. Obviously, or maybe this is showing me that I just haven't been listing as much J. Crew. Whatever the case, J. Crew is no longer on my list of most profitable brands. And I'm able to see it in such a beautiful picture right here. Next, I can see the most profitable sizes. So you'll notice that for me in the year 2020, medium was the hottest size. Um, and then one thing I want to note too, if you look underneath the graph, there are four icons or it's kind of like a key. And so there's a white box with the word revenue and then profit sales available. You can customize what information you see on these graphs. So if I don't want to see what I have available, I can just click on that. And then it just gets rid of those numbers in that line graph because maybe that's just too much and it's too crowded with information with all of that. If I want it back, I can just click on it again. I think that that's pretty cool that they let you customize the information in that way. The next graph that they're going to show you on your dashboard is your most profitable categories graph. And this is where you can see in the year 2020 right now, for example, which category has made me the most money? Shoes, which is pretty interesting because in the last 30 days, it's been jeans. And so you can kind of see like the trends from year to year or even, you know, what's been working for you in the past month or so. And I think that that's just really neat. Another thing I want to point out is that you can click on any of these columns to do a deeper dive. So right now, let's go to the let's go to 2019 because that's going to be a year's worth of data. So in 2019, tops were my highest performing category and if I click on that column, it's going to pull up so much information for me. So you can see it's going to break down by month at the top here in this top graph how many tops they sold in every month of the year 2019. You can see a chart with the gross profit and margins. You can see the average revenue, like what was the average sales price for my tops in the year 2019? It was low. It was $12.55. So even though I was selling a lot of them, I was not selling them for much. And then the average profit is even lower, obviously, once you factor in Poshmark fees and stuff. It was only $9.55. So that information is important because it shows me that even though I was selling a lot of tops, I was not selling them for a lot of money. 
You can also put your cost of goods in this app. I don't do it, but if you were to, it would also average out your cost of goods. You can see how many days things were listed. You can see information regarding how many likes you got on that category, how much you paid in seller fees or shipping discounts or upgraded shipping labels. You can see so much amazing information, okay? So that's what happens if you click on any of the columns. You'll get a deep dive into that particular piece of information, which is pretty cool. Okay, if we keep scrolling, you can see your most profitable subcategories. You can see finally your most profitable departments. This is where you're going to see like out of women's, men's, kids, home, where are you making the most money? I'm not shocked to see that it is in women's for me. So that is everything on your dashboard. So much information right when you open up the app to help you make informed decisions about your Poshmark business. So now if you look at the very bottom of the screen, you'll notice three icons. On the left, it says sales. In the middle is your profile picture, and that's how you get back to this dashboard. And then on the far right, it's inventory. So we're gonna look at sales first. And the first thing that you'll notice is my sales analytics. Again, it's got the various time frames, so I can look at the last 30 days. I can look just at the year 2020 um, and so on and so forth. So if I wanted to, I could click on any of those columns to do a deep dive into how I did that month and what items sold for me in that month. The way that this app gets all of the information that you see in it is you have to import your sales. And I'm gonna do a tutorial on that. But the creators of this app, and it's just two guys running this whole thing they don't set foot inside of your Poshmark account. They don't even get the password for your Poshmark account. The only way that they get all of this information is you go into your account, you download your sales report and your inventory report, and you import that information right here. So I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. But there are some cool features here. I'm only going to highlight a few. Otherwise, like I said, this will be an hour long video. But the really cool thing about this is, for example, if you click on my bottom line, one really cool thing about this is if you do know your cost of goods and if you put that information in your listing under like that hidden info part, it'll show up here and then you can see your actual profit even after cost of goods. And then if I swipe, it'll show me my total revenue for my current year and compare it to last year. Obviously, it's less than what I did last year and that's because we're only in the month of October right now, but it's showing me like how much more I need to do in order to catch up to how much I did last year um, by the end of the year. And then it's going to also compare the total number of items sold. Um, same thing with average revenue per sold item. So right now I'm actually doing better as far as my average sales price than I was doing last year, which is great. I'm up 5% on that. And then the total cost of sold items, I don't have that information because I don't have my cost of goods information in there. And then seller fees, it's showing me how much I've had to pay in seller fees. And then it's showing me my profit compared to last year as well. So that's like your bottom line, your big picture. Um, and then some of the stuff we've already seen even in the dashboard in regards to like looking at your sales insight, your department insight, all that kind of stuff. One really cool feature that they do have here is one, you can see your sales map. I know some people like to print out like a map of the United States and see where they've shipped you know, packages to, but they also show it here. So you can see I've basically shipped a package to every single state except for Vermont. That's the only state that I haven't had someone purchase something from me from. And then another really cool feature is in the bottom right corner, you can see um, something that says repeat customers. Now I've gone into the settings of this app to hide customers' names. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to protect their privacy. And how cool is it that that's even a feature? But you can see like this person at the very top, the top row, they have purchased $336.81 worth of uh, merchandise for me. And if I click on that row, it's gonna break it down and show me like when they bought stuff, how many pieces they bought and all that stuff. So they bought 20 things for me and I made a profit of $336.81 off of this person. That's pretty cool to see. That way you can start to familiarize yourself with usernames of people who shop your closet frequently so that maybe you're having like a bad day and someone sends you kind of a lower offer than maybe you would like, but on any other day you would accept, but you're just like in a declining mood, but you notice it's one of your loyal customers, then you kind of know, okay, you know what? Like, I'm just gonna accept this even though I'm kind of in a bad mood, you know, stuff like that. It's just really good to know who your repeat customers are. 
Okay, so that is the sales analytics portion of the app. And then the inventory portion, I didn't even think I would care that much about this, but oh my goodness, this part of the app has proven to be so helpful to me and I'll explain why. So obviously, just like you could in the sales analytics, you can search through your sales like if you really wanted to pull up a specific sale for some reason, but you can do the same thing here if you wanna search your inventory. Let's say American Eagle pair of skinny jeans like I just want to see if I've sold them already or not so I can see okay yep there they are there's my you know jeggings in a size double zero that's what I was looking for they're there cool so you can search for inventory and you can search for sales in the section of your listings on Poshmark where they have like that hidden information people put like their cost of goods but people also put information about their inventory so maybe they have like a skew for their item or they put things like bin a or something like that you could search by skew if you wanted or you could look up an item and very quickly figure out like where you put it so it's really cool that um, you can also utilize information from like that hidden portion of the details part of a listing this is what's huge if you go to inventory insight holy cow is there a lot of really valuable and helpful information in here so the first thing that you'll see are the top 30 pieces that will bring in the most profit okay so that's pretty cool it's good to know that if you swipe it'll show those same pieces but it'll just show their listing price pretty cool this is what i care about in the third swipe it shows you which pieces you've had listed the longest and why this is so huge is because this is what i use in order to relist instead of going into my poshmark closet and sorting by just in and sorting by what's available and then scrolling all the way to the bottom which takes like a gazillion years i just have to go to this part of the seller inventory app and i can see right away which items have been listed the longest. So not only do you see which item it is, you see how many days it's been listed. So all the way to the right, you see that this Gap Coral Floral Print Sleeveless Dress has been listed for 119 days. It gets better. If I click on the bar, it takes me to this page and I can do a couple amazing things. The first thing I can do is I can save the photos from this listing onto my phone. This is huge because this is a 119 day old listing and chances are I don't have these pictures on my phone anymore. I've deleted them and it's going to take me a long time to go back into like my iCloud or to go into my Google Photos or wherever you store your pictures and find those pictures or to go through and screenshot these pictures. So this has automated that task and just gone ahead and saved these pictures to your phone. That's time saver number one. And then the second thing that I love about this is if you click on copy listing, it's going to take you to this page and you'll notice at the very top, it says Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, other, and I'm going to explain why, but then you'll notice underneath that it says title, gap, coral, floral, print, sleeveless, maxi dress, extra small. If I click on that row or on that tile, it's going to copy the title of this listing and then it's going to open up the Poshmark app and take me to this listing without me having to close out of Seller Insight and look for the Poshmark app on my phone. It takes me seamlessly from this app to the Poshmark app. It saves a few seconds and it may not seem like a lot of time, but you add those seconds up and it's a lot. But basically what they've done is they've just created a streamlined way to do many different tasks because you're able to toggle back and forth from this app and Poshmark. Unfortunately, I can't show you that act of toggling right now because do you see like in the top left corner where it has the time and it's like in red? That's what's showing that I'm screen recording right now. And that's where it would say seller insight. So when I click on this tile, it's gonna take me straight to the Poshmark app and where it has the time, that is typically where I would press in order to go right back to the Seller Insight app. So just know that that's one of the coolest things about this and I can't show it to you because I'm doing a screen recording and that's super frustrating. But anyway, now that I'm here, if I wanted to relist this, I would go to edit and I would go all the way to the bottom and go to the copy listing button because that is a new feature that Poshmark came out with that is really cool and it helps you you know, relist pieces really quickly. The annoying thing about it is that when you press copy listing and the new listing pops up, the listing title says 
copy dash, and then it has some of your original listing, but it truncates it so you miss what was at the end. But the cool thing about what we just did is we just copied the title. So now what I can do is I can select all of this and I can paste the original title. Look, it's not like it saves that much time because my alternative would have been to delete the word copy and then to go to the end of the listing and add in whatever words were cut out. But this saves seconds and those seconds add up. So this is amazing to me. And then I press done and then I can, you know, edit my listing. I can change things in the description if I want. I'm not going to do that stuff now. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. But let's say I created a new listing and now I have to delete the original one. So I'm going to go back to Seller Insight by clicking on the word Seller Insight in the top left hand corner. Again, I can't show that to you right now because of my screen recording. So I had to get there the, you know, traditional way of like getting out of the app and opening this one. But I'm here now. So now at the bottom, it says delete original listing. Again, it just takes me seamlessly into the Poshmark app. I can click on edit. I can delete the listing. Bada bing, bada boom, we're done. And then I can go back to the seller insight and I can just keep doing the same thing over and over again. I just, you know, relisted the oldest listing. Now I can go to the next oldest listing and then the next oldest listing. This is huge. If I swipe again, this is huge as well. Now it's showing me the top 30 items with the most likes. This is huge for closet clear out days or for when you wanna send out offers to likers. If you don't wanna send out offers to likers on every single item, you could just do it on the ones that have the most likes and this tells you right away what those items are. Or if you wanna drop the prices of some of your pieces, you can just target the ones that have the most likes because then the most people will get notifications and that'll increase your chances of making a sale. So this is showing you so beautifully what pieces to target and I love that and then finally it'll show you the top 30 items that have the most comments this one isn't as like useful but I mean it's there if you want it um, if you scroll down there are a few other things that you can do here you can actually share from seller insight and I'm not going to do it right now because like I said, I can't toggle back and forth, but basically it allows you to share strategically. So if you want to share all of your listings, that's the second option. You can share all of them. If you want to just share the listings that have the most likes, they will set it up so that it just goes in order of which items have the most likes. And the way that they do it, I'll click on this. If you'll notice, it'll show you the 50 listings in this session. If you look at the very, very bottom, it says you will be listing 50 listings in this session. So it shows you the 50 listings that you're going to be sharing. And what they do is if you press, I'm ready, let's do this. It'll show you the listing one at a time. And then you just press on the share button and share it. And as soon as you do, it'll load up the next listing without you having to do anything. It's amazing and if you actually go to this video here they did like a test to see if it was faster to share from the Poshmark app or from this app and it was faster to share from the seller insight app so that's another cool thing about it and if you only have like five minutes let's say you're waiting in the grocery store in the checkout line and you have five minutes and you want to share for just five minutes you could choose what you want to target you could just target the listings that have the most likes you could target the listings that have the highest listing price you could target the items that have been listed the longest Longest. It just helps you make the most of your time and use your time strategically. How cool is that? You can also edit your listings within the app. You can improve listings. They'll indicate which items you know, could use some title improvement. Basically, they're just looking for which titles have less than four to five words. So I don't really find that one super helpful. But those are some really cool things that you can do on this app. So the last thing I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how to import your information from Poshmark and put it into the app so that you have access to all of this information. So I'm going to go into Poshmark. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my like seller profile. And I'm gonna go to my seller tools. 
and the third row is my sales report, and the fourth row is my inventory report. So for my sales report, you have to select a date range. You could do all of last year, you could do the year 2020 up until today, or you could do a custom range. If it's your first time creating a sales report, I would create a custom range and I would make the start date the day that you started selling on Poshmark. If you don't know when you started selling on Poshmark, you can go to my Posh stats. You can see at the very top, it says Posher Sense. And I've been a Posher Sense December 27th of 2017. So now that I know that, I can go back to my seller tools. I can go to my sales report. And for my custom range, I can choose December... I'm going to have to keep scrolling back here to get to 2017, but it was December uh, 27th of 2017. So there's my start date. And then for my end date, I could just put today. So if I do that and then I press email report, it's going to create a sales report for that date range. I press OK. And then they say that a link will be sent to my email shortly. So if I check my email, I actually already did this. So if I click on Poshmark your sales report, I'm going to download the report. It's going to take me back to Poshmark. I have to put in my you know, uh, password and all that stuff. I'm going to log in. So I'm going to go ahead and download it to my phone. And you can see in the top right-hand corner with that down arrow, it just downloaded. If I go back to the Seller Insight app, um, I'm going to go to the Sales Analytics, import my sales. I'm going to import my sales report. And you can see all of the different inventory reports and sales activity reports that I've downloaded in the past. I'm going to import my most recent one. It's importing and this is like a pretty big file to import because it goes so far back, but it's it's actually pretty fast. And so they'll put all of that information into the app and that's how you have access to everything. You do the same thing for your inventory. You go to my inventory report. That one, there's no date range because they're just looking at what you have available in your Poshmark closet right now. And so you download the report, you import it on the inventory analytics side, and then you have all of the information for Seller Insight to show you all of this data and analytics in such a meaningful and helpful way. So it says success, I'm gonna press finish. They always put out this disclaimer that says that the totals calculated by the app should not be used for accounting purposes because they did not create the sales report Poshmark did. So they wanna make sure that they're not held liable for this information, but it's coming from a reliable source. It's coming from Poshmark itself, right? So now you can look at your sales analytics because you put in all of that information by importing your sales report from Poshmark. Just a couple other things I wanted to note. If you go into settings, you can change a few things. So for example, like for display, you can change the number of decimal points that you see because on Poshmark, they don't really use decimals. But if you wanted to see like down to the penny, how much you were earning, for example, on an item, you could see it here. You could also put in a default item cost. If you know that your cost of goods, you use like an average versus keeping track of every single item. You can also like hide some of the information. This is great for like, if you want to, you know, take screenshots of the app for Instagram, for example, if you wanted to hide information regarding like your costs or earnings or your seller fees or, you know, really anything, you could do that. I chose only to hide customer info because I didn't want to put them on blast in that way. But you guys saw all of my numbers for everything else. I didn't really care. And then also like you can enable closet sign support, which just means if you have signs in your Poshmark closet for things like sales, they know to ignore that during the inventory report import. The very last thing that I'll talk to you about is pricing when it comes to this app. You can pay monthly, which is a low monthly price, and there's a free three-day trial attached to that. I don't know about you, but now that I've been using this app since, I don't know when it came out. Like I know for sure since last December, but maybe even earlier than that. I can't live without it at this point. Like I just can't. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about Seller Insight. I really do think it is an essential tool to have if you sell primarily on Poshmark or really if you do any business on Poshmark for that matter, because like I said, Poshmark just doesn't really have a lot of information for its sellers to use in a meaningful way. You can see, you know, how long you've had things listed. You can, if you wanted to manually track like which 
brands are selling for you best, but it's a lot more work to have to do it yourself and to create your own graphs and whatnot. And this app just really does a great job of showing you exactly what you need to see in a way that will make sense and help you make informed decisions. Again, if you're interested in trying out this app, you can check out the link down below. You do get a three day free trial with the monthly option. That way you can just try it out. If you don't like it within the three days, if you don't think that it's going to change your Poshmark business, then you just get rid of it and you don't use it anymore. But I almost can guarantee that when you open up this app and start seeing information about your Poshmark business in this way, it's going to be really hard to live without it. So just a fair warning to you, if you're going to try it, I can almost promise you that you're going to be hooked. So that's it for today's video. Let me know what you think about the app. If you're interested in trying it out, if you're excited about it, or if you feel like you could leave it, you don't really need it in your life. That is cool too, to each their own. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy tips videos like this about how to grow your Poshmark business, definitely make sure that you're subscribed to my channel because I do put out weekly what sold videos as well as videos just like this, as well as more fun, like just kind of lighthearted videos like thrift hauls and whatnot. I'd love to have you be a part of this community. But thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to hit that like button on the way out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!